so what I did when I received the photographs is go through them quickly, and then I went through them again, and I went through them again, and then I started to look at the pictures which started to jump out at me. And the criteria I had, and which I'd learned from being a member of the Professional Photographers of Canada, um, was to uh, judge them by, first of all, impact. So when I looked at the photograph, if it kind of jumped out at me, that was the criteria that one would be put aside. Then I would look at the technical side of it. Is it in focus? Is it well exposed? And then the third criteria was, how does it tell a story? Am I just looking at a flower or am I looking at a flower dancing in the wind? Am I looking at a bird flying or eating or doing something or is it just a bird sitting on the ground? So there can only be so many choices I made and uh, you, as we go through these photographs, there will be comments which I made while I judged, and there's pictures which don't have any comments at all. It's not because they don't deserve it, it's just that there was only, I was only allowed to choose a certain amount of photographs. One section, I think, and I forget which one it was, I had a very few entries. Some entries were in the wrong department, wrong, which is normal. I, I've actually entered pictures and been told by judges that it should be in another section. So it's very, yeah, if you're in entry competitions, you need to study the rules about what you are entering into. But then you can get your photograph is not judged, and and it may be the best picture in the whole show. It's in the wrong section. Um, I don't think this particular competition is particularly driven for people who are anxious to win awards. It's just that people want to see how they did, uh, you know, uh, how their photography stands up personally. So let's see if I can get this going. So, this picture... Um, Can we get some lights down? Um. So, this picture, so some of the pictures that I, I, I didn't choose, just some of them choose. It's, it's in focus, but it's in, I would have done a little few things, I would have dropped off the top. There's a little things, a lot of the photographs which weren't chosen had tiny little things poking in the bottom of the picture or on the top of the picture, mm -hmm. which you just put your hand over that, then your eye goes to the bird. Yeah. So it's a real simple thing to do, to all compose otherwise. It's a little busy, I might have to try to move my position, or nothing wrong with photographs. Just a little tiny thing can help. Oh, uh, that's beautiful. I have no idea why this hasn't got more comments. Um, perhaps in this particular section, um, there were other photographs which I thought maybe stood out better. My goodness, how did it get so Okay, so I would have got a lower angle. I would have just, you know, crouched down a little lower and tried to play um, with the, a lower view. You know, lay on your belly and try to do or, or, or get lower. And there's that thing, there's a shadow on top. That's kind of, for me, distracting. So a lot of tiny things that I can improve the photograph. This is a portrait. Uh, I'm not a fan of taking pictures in the middle of the day, but sometimes when you're on holiday, you don't have any choice. But I would definitely uh, difficult to control the lighting on that. <laughs> this one is a line through the bird's head. <laughs> Uh, the eye always goes to the lightest part of the photograph. Mm -hmm. So where's your eye going to? Going to those white lines, perhaps? Yeah. Nice composition. It doesn't jump out at me. It's a picture of a heron. There's lots of other things herons do I would be looking for. Once you photograph a heron so many times, or an eagle so many times, you want to be looking for something a little different. Some flight shots, some eating shots, some mating behaviour, some you know, aerial displays when they, they tumble down. But everybody has to start somewhere. So that person who took that picture, or maybe it's the first picture they've ever taken, their first camera, or it might be somebody who's been taking photographs for 50 years. It might be somebody who just take a picture for fun. It doesn't matter. As long as you enjoy photographing. It's kind of a cute picture. Isn't it? Yeah. So that's all that matters. It really only matters to you. It doesn't matter to anybody else. If you like the picture, that's the main thing. Now you'll learn much more with that attitude. This one, 
almost, almost. I know it's, 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 it's gleaning. It, it, these birds glean insects from emerging cactus. If the head was turned to me a little bit more, I would give it a few more points. It's, it's, it's really good, nice shutter speed. Nice, nice attempt to get. It's not quite right. It's a nice shot, but it's not quite there. Yeah, so, I mean, kudos to whoever found this, because you can, very difficult to find. Iona, maybe? Is this the is it photography? It was right there. Iona? Uh, no, no, it was uh, over um, in Meadow Valley, Valley, yeah, Eastern Washington. Oh, okay. So you have these at uh, Iona on the um, north uh, jetty, but they're very difficult to find. It's a picture which you'd have in a, in a, in a catalog or, 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 or a magazine just to show what the bird looks like. Now this one, I said, uh, um, standing against the elements on a hectic windy day, the crashing waves and rugged shores serve as a powerful backdrop, emphasizing the rarely seen rock sand effect. This conveys the wild beauty and drama of a coastal landscape at dawn. So, so yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's the picture on here. Uh, much lighter than the actual originals, so if you bear in mind, the exposure is much better on the screen here. Uh, I think it's, this, is, this is a little bit bright. So if you can take that into consideration, all these photographs, it's, it's actually way more saturation than the originals, which I see here. But that's, that's a pretty neat shot. That's a, that's a tough bird to find, rock snap -like. There's been one at um, uh, to us in Ferry Terminal the whole winter. This is kind of a nice shot. It's uh, nothing wrong with it. Good shutter speed, nice composition. I'm not too sure. It's a picture of a, uh, for a raven, right? Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more environment where it is. Yeah. And what it's I'm not too sure. It's a bit static. It's a good picture. It's a, you know, it shows you all the details. It doesn't tell me much more, much else. Though. This one, which doesn't really show very well here, yeah, I thought it was really very good. Um, what I've written here is kudos to the photographer for getting out in inclement weather because most people <laughs> don't go out when it's snowy. Well done. To, I have to admit to a crime. Yes. I took it from my deck in the West End. Don't say that. No, uh, uh, yeah, sure. Okay, but I mean, some of the best pictures, the best picture I've ever seen of Alice Hummingbird um, was taken in, uh, in a rainstorm. It was absolutely fantastic. I mean, yeah. So going out in inclement weather, even if it's on your deck, which can be a cold, right? Uh, this image stood out from the many in this category. I do think a tighter crop on would have helped make this a stronger composition. So on the right hand side, I would have gone in and taken the right hand side off of it. Um, removing the right hand side, birds would improve the composition. Has a very strong artistic element to it. So I think it's artistic, right? It's, it's, it's more than just a picture of the birds in a tree. It's telling me that it's in the winter, it's cold, the birds may be looking for forage. But I would take the right hand side off. Uh -huh. You're right or our right? Sorry, I don't... I don't, I don't know. I don't know whether it's... Take this. Yeah, oh, it's all that. Yeah. Oh, I saw. So then, then, then the eyes, see, uh, the, we, we read left to right. In, 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 in we read this way. So the eye usually goes like this on capital on photo. Yeah. So the eye goes here and it sweeps. And it sweeps out of the picture. I want it to stop and go back. I want the eye to come along and then look around. Yeah. So, most people look at pictures for three seconds in this day and age, which is bombarded with photographs. Three seconds is all you got. So unless you've got something going on, composition. Yeah. 
you lose the viewer. It's like TikTok, right? TikTok is tick, tick, tick. they've got pictures all the time. That's how people look at it. So if you imagine the audience got to have something to keep the viewer, so you have to use visual cues. And there are some more coming up. And would you keep the same amount of like the sky and the branches below, or would you be cropping either yeah. one? Yeah, um, I would probably probably look at the top because there's, there's a lot of negative space that was not really working very well. Yeah, so come down a bit and take the right hand side off. Yeah. And then those those two branches on the left are leaning, yeah. right, which creates tension. Yeah. Things which create tension, like like. Yeah. And it could, could, the viewer starts going around like this. Yeah. Then you've got them for three seconds. Then they're on to the next photograph. If you put a picture in front of a judge, a competition, you've got to have them, you know, look at it from one. It's just static, like like the raven. Yeah. There's nothing happening in there. Except that's a picture, a good picture of a bird, but the judge is not is, is wondering what, what's going on here. If that. Whereas this one I think is artistic and it can be improved and it's again how can you can come up with it? Okay, some of these the descriptions from the creator. So I was wondering why I couldn't understand my writing because it's not all my descriptions. So this one, yeah, that's um, it's it's uh, it's a nice, it, it's a bit cluttered, right? Yeah. It's a lot going on there. Yeah. Uh, the tree and the pine cones are are competing with a fantastic picture, which you almost see in the back of a note, back note or a coin or something. But the, the, there's just too much going on there to yeah. make it a winner. Great photographs, just not a winner though. <laughs> oh, judge's comments. John's comments. A very subtle use of light and shadows draw the viewer into the scene. A different take on a familiar scene. So it's, it's somebody looking at a very familiar scene, which you see every duck pond, wood ducks. How many people are going to be careful enough to compose something which makes you want to look around a bit? Yeah. There's something happening there. There's beautiful colours. The background is absolutely super because there's nothing in it to distract you. When I was a photographer, I was a, uh, let's go back, but I was a photographer for 35 years professionally. My style, everybody has a different style. If we all did it the same, it would be completely boring. My style, if I was taking pictures of <coughs> soccer, if I was taking pictures of birds or people, was to make sure I'm looking at the background before I click the shutter. Because I don't want a porta toilet in the background. <laughs> I don't want electric wires. Mm -hmm. I don't want half out of focus birds in the background where the eye is going to shoot off over there. I want you, the viewer, to look at the subject matter. And that's all happening here. It's all working. And it doesn't have to be a rare bird either. It just has to be well thought out and composed. Is that in the bottom of the picture? Is the foreground other than the main rocks? Uh, I think that's a wing. It's a tree. Yeah, it's a tree. Uh, on so the left, bottom right. Part of the same bird? Yeah, that's a wing. Yeah. That's a wing. Oh, I, I, it's, 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 yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind it because they, they can. Yeah, you, you really want to build it. So, 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 so like, this, this, is, this is a visual cue. Yeah. Like, a visual cue is yeah. that point. It's, it's like an arrow saying, look at me, look down there. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. the eye goes around like this. So that's what he wants. I want to be able to have the viewer, because you were there, the emotion you felt, not necessarily is going to convey to another person. Because they weren't there. Back there in the other photo, there was something on the top right. Oh, no. Louder. On the top right corner, Louder. is that the votes that it received? Looked like a mushroom. Yeah, that's a member of the choice. Oh, what's so we haven't been looking at that. <laughs> seven, oh, seven members that hold for this photo, and uh, they get 11 hearts. Okay. Yeah, I don't know whether my choices uh, re relate to your choices. So no. They probably don't, maybe not. I mean, it, it's, it was one competition, it's kind of a critique, right? Yeah. I wish I had been able to have my photographs critique, because when I started photography back in the 80s, I, I was working blindly, and the only person I had to work with was the editor like, at the camera of a courier. Who got a, you know, got a, a crayon, China market crayon, and went around the, the uh, uh, um, 
contact sheet and said, these are the pictures which are going to be in the paper. That's how I learned. <laughs> and I went, well, why is he choosing that one? Why is he choosing this one? I would have chosen this one. Why is he choosing that one? And then the paper would come out, and there would be a full-page spread. In the old days, we had the newspaper was this big. Yeah. And there would be five, six pictures on the page, usually five or three. And I thought, wow, that's how I learned. <coughs> I, would, I, I, had, I had my eye, I could see the photographs, but I couldn't choose the, of the 36 pictures. I didn't know which ones to choose. And he taught me. Uh, but to, just by doing it, by seeing what he did. Yeah, I mean, I, I was, I had, I had the vision. I just didn't think how to use it. Yeah. It's like you guys have the vision, and it's just a little tweak it, tweak the raven shot, tweak this shot. But this one doesn't need tweaking. But the, there's a lot of these shots that are almost there. Yeah. Some of them are right there. It's, it's a couple which are like totally amazing. And like everybody's a different level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, but uh, this is really good because we're learning, and that's what we really want. Is well, to I learned everybody about, to learn. Yeah, I learned from other people, and I learned from other photographers. I go, wow, they they took the time to go to Mexico and take a picture of the eclipse with a frigate bird flying across. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, the amount of effort went into that shot. Yeah. He's like he's like twenty three years old. I met him when he was twelve. And he has, the, he, you probably know Leon. Leon? He, I mean, amazing, because he, he's one of the few people I know who, when he goes out bird, bird, he takes pictures of birds in the environment. He doesn't take pictures of, we well, he don't. He, he's an expert at taking pictures of birds doing stuff and showing the landscape. He's, he's a great talented on that. I learned from him when he was like 14 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been doing 30 years of photography. And I was learning from this kid, I was like, amazing. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, it's kind of messy, isn't it? So, it's, it's not, I'm not too sure what I'm supposed to be looking at. Yeah, it's two, two, is it three birds? Two. Two birds. Yeah, it's two. Uh, no, what's on the left hand side? When he's turned around. One foot. No, it's turned around, okay, okay. yeah. It's, it's, it's too tight. Yeah. It's not that space to breathe. Um, yeah, it just didn't it just didn't jump out of me. It, it, it's 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 just the thing is when you start photography, you photograph everything, right? When I first started taking pictures of birds, I photographed every bird which moved because <laughs> I had never seen it before. I'd never seen a sandhill crane before, so I photographed it. Yeah. After a while, I kind of finessed it to where I got them doing different things. Then I saw them flying one day, and they looked like pterodactyls. So I spent a whole month doing flight shots of sandhill cranes because to me it looked like pterodactyls. <laughs> and that, I, that's I went, so this person needs to go back and do more of it uh, and see what else they can get. Yeah, I know, I tried to shuffle by. Oh, is that this one? No, sorry. Yes. This is good. Uh, top left, I would kind of take that branch out. Yeah. Um, it's a nice shot. Uh, there's a little tiny thing in the bottom right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can do that in Photoshop, or you can just move or zoom in, or just move yourself. Those who don't do Photoshop, I think you're allowed to do a little bit of Photoshop. I, I, I don't. I think it's okay to take that out. I think you can take that branch out. It's, they, you can go to extremes. There's some great photographers who do amazing stuff in Photoshop, like Glenn Bart, Glenn Bartley. I mean, totally amazing. There's a lot of Photoshop going. Some people think that's not right. Well, when I was in the dark room in the newspaper. We used to dodge and burn the hockey shots. You know, who are those have done dark rooms. So dodging and burning in the, in the dark room is the same as dodging and burning in the photograph of the shot. So there's, 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 you can't do it with editorial shots. If you work for the back of the sun, you cannot be photoshopping stuff. That's illegal. You get fired. But if you're photographing your own stuff, I think go for it. I did judge a competition uh, for Kappa once, and the winning picture was an eagle flying through the mountain in the background. Apparently, this photographer took the eagle and put it on the different backgrounds. Oh, yeah. I got fooled, everybody got fooled. Freeman Patterson was there, he got fooled. And who's he fooling? Himself, right? Yeah. yeah. So all he's doing is taking this eagle and sticking on different backgrounds. I mean, stupid, right? Because it, what, what, does that help him become a better photographer? Yes, he got lots of awards. Big deal, right? Honestly. <laughs> Yeah, so um, the, the, he's, the birds went out of the picture, right? It needs to be coming into the picture. 
so that it's going somewhere, it's just going out. It sometimes works on rare occasions, but I don't think it works in this case. This is probably now under the key at uh, Lonsdale Key. It's in Seattle. Seattle, okay. Lonsdale Key, you can do this shot because the particular moths nest there. Not nest, but right? they may nest underneath. Because the particular moths are found in Lonsdale Key. And they have this beautiful pattern, which is where I think First Nations get all of their designs from. Yeah, mm -hmm. cool points. Ovoids. Ovoids, what they call them? Yeah, yeah. So circles. First Nations, a lot of that stuff, right? And to put a bird in there's great, or you put anything in it. Yeah. Is that me? Is that from oil? Only is this that reflections of water or boats? Or? No, it's reflections of a, a yellow dunk <laughs> yeah. down onto Ripley water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You go anywhere, go to the coast of Brown Island, they have that everywhere. <laughs> but it's a good thing to play with. I, I just think the bird should be. Perhaps coming in. Yeah, it looks like it's coming to a brick wall. <laughs> it's a good idea. Okay, uh, anyway, I can't, I can't really fold the shot. There's nothing I can see. Um, this is when this person is using negative space. It's when 80% yeah. of the picture is negative, not being used. But it does give it allow allows it to breathe. It does show the environment the birds in. Birds looking around, at it. so it's kind of the story. So, in that sense, it's successful. Most people go out there and try and get as close as they can. They don't do this type of shot, so they have all their pictures are close ups, they don't have any environmental shots. And that's what Leron's good at, he's super environmental shots. And I don't mean like playing, it's, it's somehow he, he managed to distinguish very few photographers' techniques. He's, he's kind of a prodigy. Yeah, so this is a little tight. I would have left more space for the bird to go into. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay if it was in a in a in a, in a, um, uh, a bird guide. Like this is a hooded meander. That's okay because it shows all the detail you need to identify. But as, as an artistic endeavor, it needs to have more breathing space. But it's, you know, to show all the, I mean, for somebody who's never seen a hoodie of a ganser, then to show all the anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, this is a less successful version of the one we saw earlier on, of the, of the wood duck. Yeah, it's a lovely pattern. It's a lovely pattern. Um, it, on my screen, it's, it's deep brown and beautiful colors. Wow. And, uh, the the, the uh, dark space on the Top right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Probably could have done without that. <laughs> yeah, this is the very good. This is the uh, uh, mating ritual oh. where they create bubbles oh. and then they show that to the female to impress. Kind of decorative? It's. it's um, <laughs> um, <laughs> oh gosh. Help me, guys. Who remembers a ready duck? Ready, ready duck. A male ready duck, a female brown. Mm -hmm. You get these up in Merrick, you've got the Merrick top of the hill in oh. Merrick, and the pond there, with, you can see the beaver. It's, it's we had them here in the winter in Brian Lagoon and Langley, but they were not this colorful. They only do this. So the bill wouldn't be that blue. In the all, only, not in the winter now. Oh, oh, only so, now. So, 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 it's, so, like so, a, it's like a it's um, Atlantic puffin, but the bill changes color oh, for the breeding season and it goes back. But they do this bubble, this bubble on the chest. Cool. All through the interior, this, the, the next month you'll see that behavior. <laughs> this is a really good shot. It, it didn't get chosen as one of the, I think we had five in each category. Only five could be there, so nothing wrong with it. it it's, it's not too much. There's a little bit going on at the top of the head. I would have cloned that out if I was. But I wouldn't bother with this shot myself. If that was my shot, I would, yeah, I would look for something different somewhere else. I wouldn't probably take it because of the thing. So sometimes I don't take photographs. I actually, as I get older, I photograph in my mind. Yeah. How many pictures of forks and owls and sparrows do you need? <laughs> Why do you keep taking pictures all the time? That's so they sit on the hard drive. <laughs> so when I'm out and I see a hawk or a sparrow, I want to, I'm looking for something when it does something, I, I like to enjoy it and then try to capture it rather than get 50 pictures like this, which is nothing wrong with it. 
But it does have a personality. It has a bit, yeah, there's nothing wrong with this photo. Uh, maybe I would have prepared for the vertical shot, because the yeah. bird is in a vertical position. So if I chop off this side, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And a little bit off the other side, not so dark. Yeah. So then you're looking at the bird. Mm -hmm. It's a exactly. vertical shot. It may have been originally it's vertical. Blue yeah, it's a, it's 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 excellent. I think it's a cute spot, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> I said the image of the chipping sparrow tells the story of a bird carrying nesting material, and that is storytelling at its best, right? It's, it's telling the story. Taking also a nice image of a bird doing what many of us never see as we lead our busy lives, because most of us don't get enough time to stop and look. Take time to slow down and the world will reveal itself as seen here. So I love this photograph. It's simple, clean background, nice and position and composition, and it's telling you a story. And it's next to season. Is it going to win a major award? No, but it, it, it tells a story that it, it's, it, it, you know, it has <laughs> nice composition and there's lots of detail in, in this picture which doesn't show here. Water drops. Yeah, cute. Yeah. Mm. I'd like to see what other shots this person did. Did they take 30 other shots and there's other ones they can look at? Often, you know, when I, I've been looking at my files from years ago, I miss stuff when I was busy editing for my blog. I missed photographs in there, which are now I oh, that's the one I should have used. <laughs> so it's worth sometimes going back and having a look. Buddy McGanza. Yeah, it's telling me a story. Nice reflection. That that the eye is going up that trunk up to the bird. And around, there's not much else for it to get distracted by. Mm -hmm. I have the bird down a little background a little bit, make it a little darker so it's not competing so much, so the bird stands out a little bit more. On this picture here, it does. It's green. The water's green. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Again, see, with the, I think it's just too close. It's just too it's crammed in there. Mm -hmm. Too much top and not enough sides. So normally, there's a, like a two-thirds rule where you have the bird. This is in the bottom two-thirds area, but it's it's in the wrong area. That, that it's too low. It's, it's um it should be uh, more on the right hand side going into the into the space rather than going out of the photograph. It kind of butts up against the edge. It's a, it's a, it's actually when you start doing bird photography, you tend to try to get as close as possible and sometimes it's detrimental. Um, yeah, see this one too, it's in the middle of the frame. It's not, it's static. It needs to be on the left hand side walking into the field. It's just the way that the human eye works. It's an animal side. Yeah, and uh, little colic and river estuary. Little colic and river estuary. It's like the other side. You can extend the part. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you could take you can you can take a thousand of these shots and not get one which you really like because it's so so disorganized. But if you're lucky enough, you can get it where everything's working. It's just it's just a question of spending some time, taking your time, finding the right situation. Oh. Uh, this is a I presume this is from a, from a rifle. Maybe. <laughs> it's cute, right? Yeah. Um, too much green. Too much. Yeah, a little too much the bottom. Yeah. That would have, that would take the picture of the the right in the middle of it, so it would change the composition quite a bit. Yeah. But it's still not this. It's a nice idea. It's just not quite working. Yeah. But that's okay. It's the same guy. Yeah. I mean, perfect, right? No, it's perfect. It's not, I can't say more. But there were other ones which, other bird, I think there's more bird shots than anything else. Uh, is, is, there were other ones which were a little bit more things going on. But it's, it's perfect. 
Okay, so I'm a bird watcher. So I'm out there looking at a rare bird, and I get a tap on my shoulder, and the lady says, there's an eagle in the tree. Because every non-bird or non-nature person thinks eagles are something about eagles. So when you have eagle shots, it can be really good to get over, because they're, they're so common, like crows. One day I was at Boundary Bay, there was a golden eagle there. So we had all day to wait for this golden eagle that would turn up, catch a duck and fly off, and then five hours later come back and catch another one. So we had time to count the eagles. We counted 2,000 eagles above us. Wow! And that didn't count the ones that were done. Oh, so we wow. about 2,000 of them. So you have all day to photograph eagles, and the stuff they do, you know, tumbling together and fighting and squabbling. This is a really nice shot. It's not, it's not that outstanding, but it's, it's, it's well done. It's right shot speed. It's, you can't fault it. Yeah, so you've got detail, you know. If I was to start a bird and I took that, I'd be very happy. Uh, but then I want to go further than that. I want something else happening. So there's nothing wrong with that shot at all. Ah, my comments. The photographers use a low angle viewpoint. It takes a little bit more effort. It does take a little more effort to lay in the tummy and planning to figure out what tides are like. But the results are very pleasing. Perfect focus, uncluttered background. Many photographers take everything from a standing position. Me too, sometimes. Low angle angles work. Low angles, low camera angles work in every photographic situation, especially for children. I mean, who, who takes pictures of children like this, like that? <laughs> get down there. That's the best way to take children on their level. Cats. Get down with the cat. Get down with the dog. Get down with the wolf. And flowers. How many people take, there were pictures in this competition or this entries, of people taking pictures of standing up, which don't work. I mean, mostly flowers, whenever I need to be on the height of the flight. Or if you want to be artistic, then you can do other things. But a lot of pictures which are rented, they're just people who either can't bend down because they're you know, 85 years old, which is fine, or they couldn't be bothered to. Exactly. And they've entered the picture because they like it. Or they're on a hike and everybody else won't wait for them. So they yes. got to take <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah. yeah. But he doesn't, he not understands because. <laughs> oh, all right. I, I, I thought this was, this one popped out at me. I, the reaction when this came up, there was a reaction in me. Yeah, yeah. And that's what judges are looking for. I've been in tons of judging competitions, I've entered stuff into competitions. I used to be a member of the Professional Photographers of Canada. And every year we had two competitions, one for BC and one for Canada. One year I entered, I had four of my pictures were accepted into the show, which is a big deal. The next year I had none, because I got cocky about what I was doing. So I knew, well, yeah. I got cocky. I got, that's an English expression. Um, Overconfident. Overconfident. Um, I thought this was super. The colours popping out. Yeah, yeah, the red. Um, double crest corner. I just, this is where somebody's broken the rule. Or the, the two thirds rule again. The picture's in the centre because it's symmetrical. Yeah. It would just kind of wouldn't work if they're too off the side. Of so this, I have looked the background. Some thought has gone into this, and a lot of money, six hundred. <laughs> Fifteen thousand dollar lens. So this guy knew what he was doing. Yeah, super. I mean, and he had the eye to be worth putting that money into the lens, right? I don't know why people buy all those sort of big lenses. Says he. No, it's fine. I got like six cameras. Did mm -hmm. I just move it by accident? I want to go back. Um. There are rules in photography, and sometimes the best images are the ones that ignore the norm. This, however, does incorporate two-thirds rules by placing the birds in the lower third of the frame, but it is the placement of the two double-crested cormorants in the center of the image that draws the viewer in. Almost monochromatic elements create a calmness. The yellow bills create a strong focus point, and many would walk by the scene without a thought, but this person didn't. And that makes me think I should be looking closer at that when 
like, oh, I'm taking things for granted. So it makes me think about my photography when I go out next time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna look a little closer and stuff like this. Because mm -hmm. I'm zooming in, see how close I get. May I ask about the white dots along the or is that on the screen? May it rain? Um I'm, I have to admit to I just had eye surgery. Ah. <laughs> and I, I had to take the Uber here. Like, uh, that was after he did the judging, not before the I can't see I can't see them on here, but actually I do see I don't know what that is. Is it a photographer? What is it? They're bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah. So, you know, you could go and clone them all out if you, if you uh, wanted to. I, I didn't bother me at all. Um, maybe it looks like dust spots. Does it bother you? No, it doesn't bother me. No. Um, some persons might go there. It would be easy to take, take five minutes to take all those quiet dots out. It doesn't bother me. I'd say the picture's strong enough that it doesn't... Yeah, I can notice that until you... <coughs> okay. Yeah, there's a close-up of a heron. Yeah, but it's lovely colouring. It's beautiful. Beautiful plumage, um, John Cleese would say. <laughs> Much nicer exposure here, much darker. Um, I presume this is a oh, Cochrane area, Alberta, okay. Yeah, so the birds looking into the frame, so that's good, right? It's like your oh, composition, there's nothing wrong with the composition, nice background. Uh, the highlights are on here are much less than here. But the fact that the birds on the right, left hand side are looking into the right hand side, the eye goes and looks around, you've got your view for three seconds, and that's the main. Um, yeah, it's nice to show, you know, this is a picture of a male and female wood duck. I do this shot, if I can get both male and females into shots, I like to do that, that's something I like to do. So that's what, obviously, that person is doing, is trying to... And the male's not in but the male is out of focus. Yeah, out of focus. Which yeah, but, is. okay, so, okay, so, you look at the female, and then where's the eye go? To the out of male, focus but no, but it goes, but... The brain it tells you it's the male, right? Yeah. And then where does it go next? It goes back to the female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. this, the, the, the brain is going like this, which yeah. creates that three second, yeah. you've got the Attention. viewer, then you're gone. Mm -hmm. If the picture is static, it doesn't do that. You look at the static mm -hmm. picture and nothing happens. At least the guy is going back and forth. Mm -hmm. It's asking a question. Yeah. It seems like if the female's head seen a bit more of the white of the male, that like some of that white scoop pulled your eye up more, maybe her head did a little bit, if the angle did a bit lower, so her head did a yeah. bit more of the white, it would have... They might be look like birds, the male's head sticking out of the top of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that would be a distraction. I think what you've got to do with good photographs, you've got to have your eye, but make, because you, because the person looking at these pictures like me as a judge, I wasn't there, I hadn't got the emotion that person had when they saw that. The only bit, the, okay, going back to my newspaper days, I, my whole career was based on stopping the car when I saw something. All right? My very first photographs I ever published, I'm driving through Campbell River, I drive past through a little Campbellton there, and there's a fishing tackle shop, there's a salmon this big hanging on a hook. I drive by, I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I just got my camera for Christmas, I think it was, I had it for a couple of months. I turn around, go back, take a picture of it for some reason, I don't know why. Next day, I get a phone call from the local newspaper. Were you that fellow who took a picture of the fish? Yes. We put it on the front page. That's how my career started. <laughs> <laughs> the next day, I got a phone call from Dial or Canada. Could we get 200 five by sevens of the picture of that? <laughs> I, 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 I charged him 200 bucks. Out. I, I had no idea. What to do. And then from that, my career started. I have an award winning picture, which is won an award in Canada, and it was in Langley. I'm driving to Langley Bypass. There was a child walking along the street with one gum boot on, mm -hmm. and a fishing rod, <laughs> and it was all tangled up. And he was like this. And he had short song, he was about 10 years old. I drove by, I turned around, went back to the picture, photograph, asked him what happened. He got his line caught in the bush, and he lost his boot in the mud trying to get it. Mum is <laughs> the kinsman, he got the money, and she got the money. That was the story. So. And it, I entered the picture into competition, 
and there were five or six judges, and it was rejected. And one of the judges said, bring it back. And they asked the other judges, why was it rejected? And the other judge said, well, there's a telephone wire in the background. And the other judge said, well, that's because he's, it's a photojournalistic shot. You can't help stuff like that when it's a photojournalistic shot. It's what it is. It's not something which you can throw out. You're not allowed to do that. And it went on to win in the competition. So, so now we've got that. <laughs> Something to accomplish. Yeah, I didn't make any comments on it. Birds are looking, it's all, it's all it's, uh, not quite right, is it? It's not working. If you disagree with me, let me know. Okay, so John's comments. Honorable mention. There isn't any honorable mentions, but I gave them. Nature can be cruel as well as stunningly beautiful. Titled Bird Life, this image makes you wonder what happened to this creature. What was its fate? There is much to ponder here. Isn't that the power of photography? To ask questions, to make us think. A thought provoking image. So I, I just thought, <clears throat> what happened? It never got off the ground, did it? And the colours are nice. That curve? Yeah. That's a visual cue. Your eyes going around there. It draws you in a little bit. It's soothing colours. So not going for it. And that open mouth, like the last scan. I mean, there's a lot going in there for me. It really touched me. I thought it was really, really something else. Okay, so yeah, we've had a couple of these wood ducks. That one's not working so well, I don't think. It's, it's a nice shot, yeah. But you know what? You can go into the London Drugs by camera, and you don't know anything about photography and take nice shots. You know, cameras are so good these days, phones are so good these days, you don't know, have to know anything about photography. It doesn't mean to take pictures that don't have any impact. Just because you're photographing with an iPhone doesn't mean you miss you miss creating impact, you miss being creative, you miss telling the story. All the photographs I take on my phone are snapshots, they're not very artistic, but then occasionally I find something I was at the superstore the other day and I was a table full of uh, tulips outside. I hit this line, whoa! I took this photograph and put it on Instagram, I got tons of hits on it. It was just an amazing collage of petals overlapping the shades. I was thinking about the, what was possible with that image outside Superstore with the tulips. Just because you have a camera doesn't mean you can't come up with something a little bit more than just straight pictures of stuff. Yeah, so you know these birds are hard to get close to if anybody's tried to get close to a very thrush. Pretty spooky. Unless you have a bird feeder in the garden. American bitten, yeah, these guys, you can miss them, they, they stand so still, you can't. It's, it's a nice composition, it's, it's a little bit busy at the bottom left, but you can't do much about that, you can't go down with the scissors and then, well, shears and cut it up. <laughs> sometimes, you, sometimes you're lucky, I had a picture of a bitten at uh, Terra Nova, in the when it's snow, and everything is white except the bitten. And then the bitten sticks out like a sore thumb. Same picture on a, without the snow, it probably wouldn't work so well. <coughs> Bone parts go. Yeah, nice, great, well done. Nice shutter speed, thinking about what's going on. The background is pretty good. This little, on the bottom of that picture, I would have cropped up a bit. That's a shadow. Oh, it's a shadow. Yeah, yeah. I'm taking that out because I'm like, it's a bit distracting to me. Yeah. I'm really picky with stuff. Backgrounds. Those things, the highlights, I, 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 I take them out there. I don't want, I try to move myself, either zoom or move yeah. my body. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can't, then a little, little bit of editors, I can't see much. Oh, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's super. Um, I didn't make any comments on that. It's, it's actually, the exposure is really nice. I guess crop from the bottom. Yeah, uh, this, yeah. yeah the, 
It's like the corner shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, you, I think so. if you crop from the bottom, yeah, then... Oh, there's these two, two, two things yeah. on the sand, distracting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a little bit off the bottom, maybe. Mm -hmm. But then it would be in the middle of the shot, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Take the top off completely? <laughs> Take the, just crop the sand off the top? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. See, that's very personal, isn't it? I took more off the bottom. Yeah, then if you take the bottom off, then birds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, you could play with that. But I, that's a really nice shot. Very similar to Cormoran. The Cormoran one just had a little more punch. How are we doing for time? Are we okay? I have no idea where the picture is. It's 8 30. 8 30. What time do you want to go to? 15 minutes more? Oh, Is it time? Okay. No, no. But we, but we want to get past the birds. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I'll, I'll go a little quicker. Sorry. So there's no comments. Uh, this, this, uh, um, this is super sharp. Well, okay. now I've got so fast that we can't even look. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just don't go that fast. Okay, that was your picture, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Nice background, clean background. Super sharp. I would take a little bit off the. Um, I would take a bit off the right hand side, and a bit off the bottom to have it in. It. It's a little bit loose composition, but super sharp, hard to get these things. You never know when they're going to arrive or take off. Um, there's a place called Monk Lake up near Merritt where they nest. There's, there's how many os ospreys are flying back and forth of 10 pound trout, and the fishermen are just going, <laughs> going, yes. Which lake was that, sorry? Monk Lake, M O N C K. It's in Merritt. Oh, okay. Yeah, ospreys are everywhere. And um, uh, Castro's, they messed up there. Sorry, 20 bucks an hour. Let's do it. And that, that's, that's, a, that's, this is the insect section. Okay, um, yeah, so what I'll do a little bit of garden. Uh, those cross ones at the bottom, I, mean, I, would, I would go in there and do a little bit of gardening, but they can't do it with dragonflies because they go away. <laughs> I, I, when I do macro photography, I use little clips. I have lots of little clips which I can fold it back. I never break anything, I never pull anything out. But I do use head, uh, uh, head clipping to move stuff out of the way. Does anybody, any of everybody knows Freeman Patterson, right? Yeah, look at Freeman Patterson stuff. You won't get, you won't get Freeman Patterson. He's got many, many books out. He influenced the whole generation of photographers. He uh, studied philo philosophy, uh, theology. Um, I'm not too sure what happened here. The picture, the flower is going out of the frame, which is a no-no. Doesn't work. John's comments: a well-executed photograph showing the skipper gathering nectar. Plenty of depth of field on the subject matter and nicely controlled background. So nothing else. Yeah, so too busy. I think we get the idea, right? Too busy. Okay, so um yeah, so uh that black thing there's a hole in the flower or the between the petal. I think I think a lot could be done with this better. Yeah. That bottom right, that bottom left, there's a thing growing in there, looks like some alien going on. <laughs> but yeah, so basically you gotta look really before you press the shutter. Remember the old days when the guys had the big thing over and they took one picture of the big glass plate? Think like that when you're doing macro photography. Don't be going like this all the time. Think about before you press the shutter. Some macro photography you only have a split second because of lighting. Yeah, so you know, it, it tells a story. Um, you can't no. zip through every other thing and spend ages on the birds. <laughs> <laughs> um, this one, I, I would have gone in closer. There's too much. Yeah, it, yeah so much improvement. The top uh, right, that just needs to go. Um, there's too much at the bottom. I would come down and just recompose and have that. Because it's lots of focusing, and that work it took it. I mean, 
It wants to work with it. Uh, okay, I, I did this one because not many people go in so close. Um, back in the day, and I think you still do it, on my old Pentax, you could take the lens off and screw it back to front. So the lens is pointing towards the camera. There's an adapter you could screw into the front of the lens and have the lens back to front. And you can get in and you can shoot just the eye of these wasps. <laughs> so it's like uh, 10 or 15 times power, like ridiculous. Hey, you probably can still buy those things on eBay where you can turn the lens back to front. Um, I like the idea that the person got in close. And the composition is, is like it had a diagonal, so there's a little bit of tension there. It's not an award winning photograph, but you know, it, it shows somebody who's trying to get a little bit closer, see a little bit more. You know, the background, yeah, it's messy, and you know, I'm not too sure what's going on there, but anyway. Yeah, so now it's time to do bumblebee shots. No, 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 no. What is that? Bumblebee, multiple bumblebees. Yeah. Um, there's a lot going on there. There's this little bit the, on the, on the left-hand side. I would have cropped that up. Mm -hmm. So, see, can you see what I'm doing? There's a pattern yeah. of looking at the thing before you have to show it. And just by moving a little bit, oh, after all down, you can improve your shot, and you won't have to mess around in the computer. Because who wants to be on a computer? My idea, because I'm pre-computer photographer, we did everything in the camera. Mm -hmm. So now with Photoshop, people like to be on Photoshop and, and all these programs to fix up photographs. Well, personally, I prefer to be on Photograph for hiking. I think I want to be on a computer. Mm -hmm. My shot, I would have come in a little closer. It's actually a lot closer. Which is equivalent to cropping? Oh, uh, cropping? Um, I would take off the, um, I would yeah, zoom in and crop it just behind the wing on the left hand side, so to take out that left hand um, bluebell or whatever it is. Um, yeah, I, 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 I might, yeah, I, I'd go in a little closer and get rid of the distractions. That, that distraction on the right, I mean, I, I would just burn it down a bit or clone it out. So that the blue was kind of more green or something. I would, well, I, on a computer, you can just take the green and stick it on top of it. I, I think that's okay because it's not editorial. It's only you going to look at it. I'm going to make a postcard out of it. I'll send it to a friend. It's not going to be in the paper, so it's not going to be like uh, Princess or whatever, or manipulate the kids' pictures. You can't do that. But with this nature stuff, you can. Yeah, this is, I've never seen one of these. A uh, well composed image. I would crop a little closer to reveal more of the clear wings anatomy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a bit off the top and a little bit off the left hand side. Mm -hmm. And on the bottom right, I would take out that dark area. Mm -hmm. And I would lift up the bottom just to take out that little dark area too. So the eye is going to the clear wing, onto the flower, back to the clear wing, back to the flower, and the eye is going to be just going in circles and looking. And you've got them for the three to five seconds, which, which is all you can ask for these days. It's conceited to think that people can like, stare at your images for half an hour. Because you were there, you had the emotion, you were there. You, you, that was a beautiful sunset, but I wasn't. It's kind of... Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Again, you know, look at the background. I mean, you know, it, it probably couldn't do much. I would have zoomed in a little bit more. Mm -hmm. This is like, oh God, the dark areas of shadow and the dark areas of the insect competing with each other yeah. mm -hmm. uh, and it's taken probably the height of the day that's often when people go hiking when these insects are out so sometimes you can't control things but it is a bit messy it's a bit uh, and that bottom right hand straw come on yeah so this one i like this image but would suggest the insects are secondary I would like to just focus on the butterfly. I would crop off the entire right hand side and recompose for a stronger outcome. Otherwise, beautiful light. And you see what this one actually shows very well. On here, it's twice as bad. So, so, so yeah, that right hand, we don't need to have the thing on the right. So, if that person is here and they can take that out the next time they go to uh, 
in this department, then I think they'll get more successful outcomes if they look a little closer when they take it. Uh, other animals. <laughs> yeah, no type, right? I, I like to see a little bit more space around. It's good if it's in a, in a book which, which shows you what Richardson Ground Squirrels look like, but if you want to do it more artistically, I think a little bit more space. John's comments. So hard to spot a photograph. My only suggestion is to try and get a catch light in the eye, which this image lacks. So when you're doing birds and animals, you need to get a catch light. That's the light of the sun on the eye. Otherwise, the eyes look dead. A bird with no catch light, with no light in the eye, is next to useless. Mm. It looks like it's dead. Mm. So you just like move like a couple of Okay, what I do is I take a shot. I have, when I go to macro photography, I have a sheet of kitchen foil, silver ah. foil, so big. And I put it in front and underneath whatever I'm photographing, flowers especially, so I get light onto the leaves and light onto the subject matter. But for something like a living animal, like that's well, pretty if you, Yeah, I, I don't get much success with frogs. It's coarse frogs. <laughs> it's coarse frogs. I, 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 I can hear them. Right. So, um, the other thing is that on the left hand side, see that light area? Yeah. Okay, so if you brought it in to take out that light area, you still have that, la that line which is on the left hand side, that diagonal line leading the eye to the frog. Mm -hmm. And that end of the leaf of the, on the middle pointing down is a visual cue. Your eye goes there, I'm sure you've seen that pointy bit, but then it goes back to the frog. So then you've got that thing going on which you're talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah, so um, we know about these guys. <laughs> uh, the light is, is uh, tight to crop, the light is kind of flat, but then sometimes you can't crop that. Or ship down. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I could make that into a more vertical shot. Take the left hand side up a bit. Oh, yes. Where are the other shots from here? Are there other shots? Is the person who photographed this? Are there more shots? A few. Is there more? Is there one in here? I kept some light like this. But then none more, though, walked along? Anyone's walked along that log? Yeah, I've got a few on the log as well, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to see those too. Anyway, Fox on the Prowl, the gorgeous backlight. I feel like I was there when I saw this. I would have liked to see the fox with all four legs showing if such a shot exists, which it does. The highlight in the top left is distracting, yeah. so tone it down or crop it off, but then you lose the sweet light on the top right. Mm -hmm. So I think a bit of Photoshop on there might work. It would, I, would clone, I would clone over the bright light, no, nothing wrong with that in my opinion. We used to do that in the dark room pre-digital. Ansel Adams dodged and burnt all the time. So Ansel Adams was doing it, you guys can do it. You just can't do it for editorial newspapers. Natural Geographic, you know the story about it? Natural Geographic, somebody took a picture of the pyramids. This is the beginning of this shot, and they, it was a vertical shot, obviously, because the cover's vertical. They squashed the pyramids as close as they so they get it on the front page. And when that came out, all hell let loose. And it came there became a rule set of rules that editorial shots cannot be uh, manipulated unless it's got slash illustration next to it then we know otherwise how do we know it's reality and with ai coming that's pre a that was back in 2005 that started to happen when digital you could start manipulating images now with ai there's no rules so we don't know what we're looking at anymore it's as nature photographer, I don't. It's only yourself who knows, so it's a real kind of work. Mm, I like that. Yeah, so I hear the reaction in the room. There's a few chuckles, a few laughs. That means that picture works. It has some element that, that viewers like, and that means it works. If there's dead silence, John's comments, the, um, those seals are keeping an eye out for the top predator, and that's the storytelling and storytelling and 
concerning element here. Good composition and technique, fascia discreta. So, so whoever's taking the pictures got his technique down. Sure. And I'm looking at the seals, and they're looking at the whale, and I'm looking at the whale, and I'm looking at the seals. So I'm there. Yeah. I was on that boat. That works, right? Yeah. That's working. The photographer may, you know, he's done, you've got the environment too, right? It's all working. I've seen way better shots, and I think it only comes to practice and people that can afford to go on these things. But, but the title is great too. Yes. Um, tide is rising. Tide, well, the seals are going to be coming yeah, off. Yes, right, yes, okay, yes, yes, that's right, yes. So they're they, they, yes, right. they hanging around London. So, so yeah. the, 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 the caption yes, tells right. you something that the picture doesn't tell you. That's right, I've not seen it yet. So the captions are very important. I, I think if I remember right, I did enter contest, I put the picture in, and I re entered it with the title, and it was accepted in the competition. <laughs> It's funny how things are. Yeah. I'm going back a little bit on judges. Uh, back in about 2000, judges were saying, oh, we have to have a section for digital, a section for analog. Yeah, I remember that. That's crazy. That's crazy, huh? It's, it's the person, the human being, taking photographs. Yeah. OK, so the reaction, I hear the reaction room. Right, so there's a reaction, people like it. My great anticipation, because it's really hard to know when these things are going to happen, great anticipation to catch the action. Good technique, making sure of a high shutter speed, and that's easy to forget. You've got the, you've got the wrong shutter speed, it should be 1,000 or 2,000, 3,000 shutter speed rather than 500. And with today's new cameras, images like these are easier to achieve. Uh, however, despite advancements in technology, and the photographer still has to be ready for the action. <laughs> I was out the other day and I, uh, I was photographing a solitary sandpiper and I was photographing a thousand shot of speed to so make sure it was good. Then I went to my video and I changed the video to 30 for a second. I forgot to change it back for the last couple of shots. And when I looked at the last five shots of the solitary sandpiper, which were stills, they were all movement in it. I forgot to change it back. <laughs> and I've been doing this for like three, five years. So it's, it's easy to do. So yeah, you've got to be on the ball. If you're going to go on these trips, you've got to. Make sure the time counts. Oh, I mean, these shots, I mean, we're, uh, okay, I mean, we're not all lucky enough to be go on these things, right? But when you are, and you come back with the money shots, great anticipation to catch the action, good technique, making sure high shutter speeds and with today's new cameras. Actually, that's the same comments again, isn't it? Same comments. <coughs> great shot. Okay. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, that's what you hang on your wall, right? Mm -hmm. In your home. Yeah. On here, it's stunning. That's less than a bit. On here, it's... You'll see these pictures when you come, right? They'll all see these pictures. They will see them. You yeah. yeah. see them on their own. They can on look at them computer, on their own. Yeah. You, you'll Here's be surprised. Nice shot. I like it. I don't, I don't mind that the bear is cut off because really the action is where the eating is going on. And that little red. And green, those earth colors, it all works really nice. Mm -hmm. A little tight there, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Me. And now we're on to botany. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would have zoomed right in there. Yeah. And make a vertical shot. Get that top right hand corner gone, that light. Where's the eye going? To the corner. Yeah. On this pictures I have, not so much, but on here, it's pretty bright. But it, yeah, I would, yeah. So that's that thing of looking um, really hard. You know, botany uh, close ups are really tough to do because it's often, you know, if, if you're an artist, painter, you've got a blank canvas, you put stuff on it. Photographers have a messy canvas, and we have to take stuff off of it so you can see it. So think, think about that when you're looking through the viewfinder and you're looking and go, that's a thing sticking at the top of it. All these messy things, I've got to get those out. Uh, now I've got it. And I've taken an hour to take a picture of a flower sometimes, the time I've got it all together. And other pictures, especially with sunsets, I've got 15 seconds to work before it goes down. So 
The only two sensors I shoot wide open, so the sun is huge, and I photograph in the foreground, a silhouette foreground against the sun. The sun's this big, and there's my flowers like this. My flowers like this. I particularly like the color contrast. New growth from old. Delicate lines and subtle colors make it a pleasing image to look at. Again, it's, 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 I'm not too sure. I would want to explore more. You know, getting closer and look at more. Uh, this one is just not composed properly. So I would move around to my right and put the one behind the other one. So I photograph them here. So I have one in the foreground and one in the background. The eye goes to the foreground, then the eye goes to the background and comes back to the foreground. And I've got you captured for that brief moment. Here I'm looking right through the middle of it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I like the fact that somebody's taken this and they've seen it and they've tried to do something with it. It's, it's a little bit too much stuff going on. Too many things going on. This one, uh, again, there's too much going on. I need, I need to need to come in closer or change the angle of view. That on the right hand side you've got a big dark spot there. I'm take the top off of it. Kind of nice shot. This is something you see and you try to photograph it and you try and try and you can't quite get it right. But yeah, I feel like I'm in the golf pilot somewhere. Um, this is taken from too high an angle, in my opinion. This one I love. <laughs> because it has repetitive shapes. It's one of the tools, the many, many tools you can use to draw a viewer in. So you guys looking at that are looking at those repetitive shapes. And I say repetitive shapes are a useful tool to draw in the viewer. I like the simplicity of the image. I would have dark in the background a little, but those thorns sure look and feel sharp. And that is the emotion the image transferred to me. So it, it spoke to me. Um, I would have, I, the photographer who have took this would have other shots of it and then try different angles and be surprised if getting closer and shot along the step might be interesting. Yeah, um, this is what I call a standing up shot. Nice shot of a uh, crocus. Oh, we were looking at Barney. Sorry, I uh, concentrate on. Yes, yeah, so it's crocus, so it's yeah, it's, it's it works. It's nothing wrong with it. I'm not sure I like too much of the angle. This one is uh, a lot of confusion going on. Shadows, sun, and shadows, either one or the other. I mean, there's always you can always break the rules, but I think it's a little, a little disjointed a bit. This one. I think you need to get that uh, green on the left. There's a green, I can't quite see it. Mm -hmm. is, it is it part of the plant? Yeah, right there's the hiker. It's a hiker? And there's a seed head of a. Oh, of a yeah, plant. so yeah, okay. There's a hiker, there's a person, yeah. and other people, and a green thing, oh, and the dark thing on the top right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there's a lot could have been done better. Yeah. Uh, Maybe there's other shots, but maybe they were on a hike with people and they wouldn't stop, couldn't stop. And that was, you know, it's like you can't stop because people are in a rush to get next. Yeah, the top, I would have taken the top, uh, bits of the top off, <coughs> zoomed in. There's another white area. So, so there's a theme, right? There's a theme here. The stuff on the these photographs, which could be taken out by moving around, or a little bit of gardening. I mean, if there's something in there which you could just pluck off and move around without actually killing it, go for it. Yeah. I've seen this shot so many times. We've all done this shot. It's nice. There's nothing wrong with it. It's lots of nice repetitive shapes. There's nothing wrong with it. It's, 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 it's a lovely shot which you can go home, look it up, find out what it is, turkey tail. Nice shot. This one, um, yeah, the background, that, that, the highlights. I would have tried to get a different angle 
without the sky. Otherwise, it's great. There's a piece of grass on there. Okay, so get the tweezers. You're allowed to do that. There's no you can't pick the stuff, but you can take that piece of grass off. Okay, this is what I call a timid shot. The person doesn't quite know what they want to do here. This one has a, a, a piece of grass on the bottom left of the, of the uh, shaggy mane. So that's where you need to get a clip, a clip of the way, way so you get a good view of this thing. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, you could get lots of things to improve the composition possibly. This one again, the background, there's all sorts of things on the right hand side, uh, which could improve by moving, I think. Or zooming in closer. I think whatever it is, what is it? It's a pink bottle brush flower. It, it would be interesting to see it closer. It looks pretty interesting. I'd like to see what it looks like. This one I like, except I don't like the, the, high, the, um, the light coming in from the top right. Flare. So it's easy enough to get rid of that. But again, it's, it's very kind of disorganized. I'm sure if you looked around, you could find much better uh, moss, I'm not sure, uh, spores, sporophytes. I'm sure in the forest there's, there's, there's better examples. This one again, uh, you know what? That On the right hand side, there's a piece which looks like it's broken off. That's really distracting. Otherwise, if you took that off, there's potential. There's potential, right? So whoever took this picture, take take a little more time, take more photographs, look around more. Okay. There were many images submitted that almost made the top five in each category, but didn't make the cut due to one compositional element, cluttered backgrounds. When composing, creating a make or taking an image, the photographer needs to look at around the frame to see what may conflict with the subject matter. I chose this image because it made an effort consciously or otherwise to focus on the plant. Too many images had distractions in the background. This one didn't except for a blade of grass in the right corner. I would have eliminated that in the field of post-process. It applies to every type of photography. Keep the backgrounds clean and the images will pop out and improve immensely. Again, this is, yeah, it's a picture of a flower which obviously somebody it's taken as a record shot, and that's what it is. It's a record shot. It's not artistic in any element at all. This is artistic, but I'm not too sure it works, though. It, 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 it could work. I'd like to see other shots of it, and I would find in this situation, take 10, 15 shots. This I thought was really cool. Nice flowing lines, clean background without distractions. I would make a slightly tighter crop off the top. Take that off the top because it's going nowhere that your eye is going out of the frame. You want to keep the eye in the frame. So I want the two major stem, the flowers, people looking at that. Well executed. Yeah, so this is this is standard up photography. Most mushrooms you need to, to know what they are, you need to photograph them from underneath. Otherwise you have no idea what they are it's so similar. But Again, it's on a hike, so I've been on time. This was, this was almost, but that uh, piece of uh, branch <coughs> on the right hand side, <coughs> that should come out. And then possibly you could come out and give it more space to breathe. Again, this is like a lot of things going on in the background. It's, it's not working. People have pictures. This one on this, uh, this one is very similar to the cover of the Langley Field Naturalist going for a walk on the trail. It, it tells me a story. It's something we all do and see. It kind of evokes that feeling of being in the forest. It, it works for me, it's nice. Uh, John's comments, good storytelling of a group of birders with an interesting cloud formations, not too staged to look awkward, a good addition to a slide presentation about bird watching. <laughs> so if you're doing a bird show, uh, put that in there. That's a group. That's you know that that's an editorial storytelling thing. Mm. Uh, 
Um, yeah, this one I I liked it except I didn't like the, the flower, which is oh sorry. John's comment. Low, nice low angle showing plants and people enjoying nature. Try to get pristine photos though. The plant on the left looks a little sad. <laughs> so yeah, if you're gonna do this, make sure you, you do it, get it all right. Because I think that one on the left looks like it's it's on its way out. Nice shot of people out on a hike. Yeah, this is the Cacodemon boulder, Squamish boulder fields. This is boulder fields of Squamish. Sorry, underneath them. That's a person, um, scaled rock. Yeah, but it's but it looks like it should be. Uh, no, I think they're hanging right. I think they're hanging. I think they're hanging. Why would the rope. Oh, yeah, yeah. How would the rope go horizontal like that? Uh, I think. They, 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 put, they put some. Yeah, fixed rope. Look at her ponytail. It's hanging straight down. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, it, it's um, it's, it, it's an interesting shot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's taken its form. Yeah. Okay, I like this a lot. What I would have done is dropped about two inches off the left hand side. All right, so the people are more are more walking into the picture. Oh, the little, kind of the center, dog is central, but I have just a little like a little bit more. Yeah. Less space on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. A really nice image. Colors pop out, right? Selective focus. It's called selective focus when part of the pictures in focus and part of it's out of focus. Uh, I would crop up a little off the left hand side so as to give the people a little more space to walk into. Then almost central position makes the image a little static. Now, it's all, it's all subjective, right? That's what I think. You may think otherwise, but there you go. Okay. This is, I looked at this several times. This is somebody having a bit of fun. Oh, it's a finger. And they're popping a puffball. And <laughs> uh, you're laughing. And I said, top marks for fun and creativity. This is the type of trick my mentor and dear friend, Al Grass, would do on one of his famous nature walks. I looked at all the images several times before choosing and came back for this one for another look. And God bless our grass. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I took Jude out that day to uh, Black and Spit, and uh, we were bird watching. And she has Alzheimer's. She doesn't know Al's gone. No. And it's oh. kind of sad, but she's happy, and Al's gone picking apples, so he couldn't come. I took her out, and I was doing e bird, and I got a whole bunch of birds, and she said, Oh, look, marble godwits. Mm -hmm. Two marble godwits, I missed that. So she, you know. <laughs> and she was looking at the birds and she was into it. Later on, I played her a whole bunch of music for the 30s and 40s. And she's a pianist. And, she's, and she sang every word to every song. I, 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 was, I was like, oh my goodness. It was magic. It was a pop ball. Who's, uh, who's, who knows? Is the, 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 I'm asking one question. <laughs> I took I, I took that yeah. Oh well, great. Right. What is the question? Is what's a puffball? The question is what is a puffball? A, a puffball is a is a mushroom that doesn't have a stem. It's just a ball, and all the spores are in the middle, and they're waiting for the mushroom to crack open so that the spores take to the air. Yeah, they're waiting for your finger. Well, there's other ways. <laughs> uh, could you eat them like when they? You can eat with, them when they're young. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a picture of some trees. Um, so the, the person who took it obviously had an interest in these trees. Um, he's not going to win any competitions. However, the person who took it might have a reason why he took them. He saw these trees like I saw the boy walking down the road. That's all it's all about, right? You all take pictures of stuff which attracts your attention, otherwise, you wouldn't take any. When you look at your pictures over a period of years, you start to see a style development which you didn't know you had. And that's your style. And that's how you see the world. And if we all saw the world the same, well, we'd be pretty boring place. 
Oh, this is a super picture. I didn't have anything to say about what they're saying. That's, that's, that's not the right picture. Yeah. But that's a calendar picture. Yeah. Yeah. Right? This is a little bigger. Uh, it is, don't say where it is. Um, is, there, is there, where is that? The Anybody? caption says Mount Baker. Baker. Mount Baker? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you can see that. That foreground is the caption? Landscape, land, uh, classic landscape. Perhaps a polarizer filter may have helped a little mm -hmm. bit, depending on the time of day. Not sure if there is a sun dog over the mountain peak or if that is a cloud. I would open up the shadow detail just a touch, but otherwise it could be a calendar, in a calendar, or a magazine. And it's a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful shot. I can relate to it. It's not going to win any competitions like last one. But it's a slow good shot. It's beautiful. This is a beautiful shot too. But your eye, your, your eye kind of doesn't really know where to go. It's, it doesn't have a wow, it doesn't have a wow, it doesn't have an impact. No. Some of these pictures you've seen tonight, but well, I can hear the reaction. Yeah. I can hear people go, ooh, that's what you want. And the other pictures, there's no reaction at all. And the other, and the other ones, there's a laugh, because there's a bit of, like the fuck bullshit. <laughs> So that's the way you've tried us with that, because cameras have no emotion. It's you are, just you are getting the emotion to the viewer. Beautiful shot. I mean, we've all been there. We, we can all relate to that. It's not going to win any awards. It's not going to be on the calendar. It's a really nice shot. It'd be great in slideshow presentation of a hiking expedition. That's what a lot of these, this would be great. Great shot for a slideshow. I mean, it's great photography, it's super. I like the way the, the eye leads yeah, from the bottom, the there's, there's a trail, and your eye goes up the mountain up to the top, very right top left, and it comes back down again to the water. It's nice, it's well composed, it's really nice. Probably maybe a polarizing film. From the this is super. This is, this is a, like a Leron shot, birds in, in an environment. This, is, this works really well. Pit Lake. Yeah, we've all been to Long Beach or Wreck Beach or not mm -hmm. Wreck Beach, um, Chestnut Beach, mm -hmm. West Coast Trail. Yeah, this is super. I mean, so probably in ours is more burnt out here, so it's probably not going to be here. Oh, goodness, you can't see anything. Yeah, so it's a fog scene, which doesn't translate very well. Um, you take it a little bit off the top, but yeah, it's, it's, it's really it is evocative. This is evocative, so that's true. So, and I like the tree that. The tree works. The tree, that's what, it's a visual tension. It, it kind of pushes your eye into the picture, right? It, it, it forces you to stay in there, yep. within the frame. For some people, these things are kind of natural when they look to, they see these things right away and they take the picture and it's there. Other people have to kind of learn, learn those things. Uh, like some people have to learn how to write, and eventually they get to be good writers. And, It's, it's another nice shot. It's not uh, calendar potential, but it's working. This one I really liked. I would chop off a little, uh, about an inch off the bottom. See those two little on the right left hand, left hand side of the bottom? Mm -hmm. Those two flowers, I'd take that off because it kind of distracts me. And I would take a tiny, tiny bit off the right hand side, otherwise. My comments were feel the calm of Harrison Lake. Lovely composition. I would crop off the leaves. Poking in from the left hand side of the image and a small amount of the bottom where there are a few stray flowering rose hips. Otherwise, it's just super. Mm. Yeah, so uh, John's comments an interesting skyscraper creating an interesting optical illusion. Because that looks like, if you look at the blue part, that looks like, a, like almost a drop of water. You mm. squint your eyes. It's like, mm. it's, a, it's an optical oh, illusion. It looks like the sky, your drop of water. Oh, I can see it. It's yeah. funny when people look at images, you yeah. see different things. The title is great, Clouds in a Bowl, mm. which was really good. Yeah. 
this is a super shot. Um, I was out shooting the um, Aurora Borealis at uh, Pitt Lake a couple of months ago, and we had there were 100 photographers there mm -hmm. with expensive equipment, very fast lenses, 48 megapixel cameras. I was there with my camera, which is not as fancy as that, and then there were a whole bunch of people there with cell phones. And they got this shot. <laughs> it was crazy. It was like this woman walks up with bang, 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 bang. What she didn't get was there were four or five different or borealis things happening. There was a thing called a picket fence, which is vertical lines of three. There were other phenomena on there which they didn't get. They got this shot. However, it's a lovely shot, right? One shot, what I like to say is that if you're doing this type of photography, this would be perfect for a magazine cover. If you're taking a picture of a bird, you need to leave lots of space in the top for the name of the magazine. You need to leave space at the side of the picture for the titles of the articles inside the magazine. So when you take your bird shots, don't take them all horizontally or whatever shot you're taking. Take vertical shots because you need to get them published. You need to have vertical images. It, it, it's very important to leave lots of space and when you go and get your images back, your raw files, and you crop them tight and make them into TIFFs for conservation, you're stuck with too tight a crop and the editor points out, do you have a picture of this bird with lots of space around it and you crop it too tightly? If you look at the picture of the, the last Birds Canada magazine, it's a picture of a uh, bobbling. It's really loose and there's a fence and there's a bird like this big. It's a very small part of the, but it is out there, all the titles of the articles inside and the title to be published on the front page. So this will be a good title then, a good example where lots of space is good. Oh yeah, a great use of wide angle lens, composition and angle of view, perfect for the subject matter. Again, as mentioned earlier, some subject matter needs to be photographed from a low angle, this is a good example. Shot from a standing position, the impact would not have been the same. So I, I thought this was really the herons, herons. Heron rope. Yeah, this is on the, I have not seen anything like this. Okay, the creator, who may be here, this image was taken from the south eastern end of Denman Island. There's a whole bunch of figures that I don't understand. With a Nikon Z6 20mm lens, wide angle lens, 6,400 exposure, which is crazy these days. When I started photography, everything was a 64 ISO. Even bird photography, 64 ISO. The southern end of Hobby Island, Lambert Channel, are visible. Um, Lambert Channel, at the end, uh, the, uh, as the red, as red of the morning, astronomical twilight and the yellow glow of Vancouver, the cone of zodiacal light through it, both faint is clearly present. Venus has risen, the morning evolutions are underway, and some of the brighter stars are reflected in the waters of Lambert Channel. Yeah, I was crazy, right? I don't do much of that type of thing, so. Uh, my comment, unusual image, I have not attempted zodiac, zodiacal light photography, but it sure looks cool. It made me look more than once, so I gave it a thumbs up. Creativity. Yeah, I wasn't sure what's going on here. I think the person is trying to be artistic and it's really pretty. I, 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 is it the person who made this here? She's, she's like. Yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on, so I'd have to, I'd have to ask about it. It's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, she's in the car. Yeah. yeah. The car window, the car. Okay, I think it's a moving car. I can't make up it because it's an accident shot off. It's purposely done like that to be creative. Or, I don't know. I, I, I can't make up it. This is cool. This, I forget the name of this uh, long one. And the last group, I think, is far away. So we'll go through it quickly because I'm running out of time. Um, far away, as the next shot of a bird, it doesn't work, it's too, too loose, loose, loose. Mm -hmm. Nice shot, um, I, yeah, a little bit too tight a crop, maybe, I think it's okay. 
It's nice diagonal tension in there. This is really cool. Three acorn woodpeckers is really good to find. I would crop a little tighter, but otherwise a really interesting capture. Yeah, I, I would crop a little bit more. It's really interesting to see three of them. Must be family. Uh, John's comments. A wonderful image, compositionally perfect. I would tone down the highlights on the frog a little as the exposure on my screen looks a little too bright. Although it's on here actually looks pretty good. So. I like it. Yeah, so that, there's nothing wrong with this. The, the earth tones are great. There's nothing great. Like, nothing. Yeah. Really nice shot. That's a magazine type shot. Yeah, that could be in a magazine easily. Uh, this is in uh, Turkey. In Turkey? Oh, yeah. there. I've been to Turkey, I didn't see that. <laughs> oh, here we are. Yeah, um, I, I think when I originally saw it, I wasn't sure what I was looking at. It's a clam. It's a clam? Giant clam. Yeah, it's pretty nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's, yeah that's super sharp. Okay. Uh, BK, yeah, this is great. I mean, everything's working there, right? Yeah. Get a topic proper. That little light area on the top. Possibly, no, if, if it's snow, I might leave it. Like oh, John's comments. A whole lot of interesting things to see in this image. Usually, a successful image is when the viewer is drawn in for longer than a few seconds. We are so bombarded with images in our life. There has to be something special to keep our attention. This image has plenty of that. An old adage says nothing beats being in the right place at the right time. Here is the classic example, and the photographer has skills to capture a fleeting moment. So that that's probably five, ten, to twenty seconds. It's gone, coming, gone. It's really right place at the right time. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's not quite. You know, I think we've been through this. Right? That yeah, a little tight composition off the left. I'd like to see the other shots. I wasn't quite convinced that there must have been better shots or other shots. And I'm thinking maybe go back and have a look at the other shots. Uh, the highlight, the bottom left, it's distracting. Nice shot. This one popped out of the screen. I think it pops out of the screen because the birds are so beautiful and colourful. The background is really uh, uh, light, uh, bright, but it does frame the birds. So I, I'll give it that. This one just popped out of the screen. The background is a bit distracted, but overall it does not distract too much. When in the rainforest, not everything is under the photographer's control. This one, simply stunning. A gem. If this were a competition, it would win, would be best in show. If this was a competition, this would win this show. Excellent competition, technical ability, everything else that goes into an award winning print. I would have that on my wall. Congratulations, submit this to all and every competition you can find. <laughs> but you're up against other people too, right? Who are doing stuff like this. So that's why when you get to this level, it, you know, you've really got to be, but it's a super image, love it, beautiful. <laughs> so I think, I think, so I think that's a reminder that we okay, have to leave okay, here in the next 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Okay, I think we're almost there. Are we almost at the end? Can you tell how far we have to go? This image, you need to crop it, crop it tighter. Yeah. This is a nice image. Um, yeah. I'd love to see the rest of the, the trip because I'm sure there's some beautiful things to it. Uh, not too sure. It's too much of the, the, the too much brightness. Yeah, we've seen this. Yeah, this is a nice, nice technique. Yeah, there's a lot of, lot, of, lot of disorganization. But I think after listening to me, maybe you get a beautiful shot, lucky person who gets underwater like that. Super. I'd like to see the other shots. I don't like the bird looking at it at the top left hand side. Surely there's other pictures. Be careful what you enter there. You may not be entering your best pictures. That looks pretty neat little thing. Eh? We want to look at that. <laughs> Thanks very much for inviting me. I know, I know it's uh, a long time. Uh,